Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the Sheep Pen, bah, where no goats are allowed. Today, I want to talk about the topic of spiritual warfare on a national level. Before I get started, I want to encourage you to support this channel financially. I also covet your prayers. I'm under continuous attack by the enemy uh, financially and in many other ways, and uh, I spend a great deal of my time uh, maintaining the hedge of thorns and ring of fire of protection. And uh, every bit of help that I can get from you is, is desired and coveted from the bottom of my heart. So please support this channel financially and with your prayers. And you can find the links in the description below. So, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of wickedness in high places. This is something that most Christians believe, but few ever take to heart. Few Christians ever really put that into practice. They never really see their life as a spiritual fight. They see it as a battle for existence, as a battle for survival, as a battle uh, against poverty and uh, for their own um, survival. But they do not see that behind every physical threat is a spiritual threat. That every act of evil done in this world, every act against you, every attempt to rob you of your, of your livelihood, every attempt to take your life, every attempt to make your life dangerous has a spiritual component to it. There is a demon behind it. It's part of a demonic plot to destroy you. And few Christians really embrace that idea. They hear scripture like the... the the devil's like a roaring lion roaming to and fro, seeking whom, they, whom he may devour. They hear that and it goes in one ear and out the other. If you honestly believe that the devil and demons were like roaring lions roaming through our land, seeking who they could feast on and devour, you would build a ring of fire and hedge of thorns around your home. You would fortify your home, your spiritual house. You would become proactive in your spiritual approach to life. You would stop seeing things in the physical realm and you would see things with spiritual eyes. And this country is embroiled in a battle with a demonic for control of our government, for control of our institutions, for control over our churches, for control over our hospitals, for control over our lives. The devil seeks to sift you like wheat. The devil seeks to eat you alive. There's an army of demons aligned against you. And you're walking around in the 3D world missing the spiritual component completely. Oh, you may understand it on some intellectual level, but you're not activated. You know, many people believe we're in the end times. And part of the end time prophecy, as it is interpreted by modern people, is that there will be some kind of revival in the land. And they see revival as a bunch of heathens turning to Jesus. But that's not revival. Revival is taking something that is dead and bringing it back to life. Taking something that was once living and breathing the breath of life back into it. Not unlike when they brought that baby in uh, back in the winter that was blue and wasn't breathing. I... I took action and breathed the breath of life into that death. And that's what, and, it, and that baby was brought back to life. And that's what revival is. It's when God breathes life back into the, uh, into the souls of believers. That this revival that I believe is on the precipice of happening is a spiritual activation of believers. Believers who get off the bench, get off the pew, take up the sword of the Spirit, stand behind the shield of faith, be prepared for the battle that's coming and use spiritual warfare to defeat the enemies of America, the church, and you as a believer. People do not take seriously spiritual warfare. And that includes people that we put in power in our governments and in our institutions. There are men standing in the pulpit today that don't know how to swing the sword of the Spirit. There are people in the pulpit today that do not have, know how to do battle against the devil when it's facing them face to face. I'll tell you a story that many of you have heard, but if you have, sit through it. You're about to hear it again. 
that I was a young minister in charge of a church, ordained by God, called according to his purpose, in hot pursuit of Jesus Christ, and I came face to face with an active witch, a head of a coven, who was demon-possessed, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this woman is demon-possessed. And I called her out. I said, oh, I see who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to flesh and blood. I'm talking to a devil. You're demon-possessed. And she looks me in the eye and says, if I'm demon-possessed, why don't you buke me? And I reached into my empty war chest of weapons, to be honest with you. I, was, I walked into a fight completely unarmed, and I was an ordained minister. I was called by God. I was operating in my calling. And for lack of anything else to do, I said, okay, fine. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And she laughed in my face and said, how come I'm not melting? And she just let out this demonic laugh that sends, that sends uh, shivers up and down my spine to this day. And I walked out of there defeated. And I went to my church and I started packing it all up. Took about three loads to get it all packed up in my pickup truck and taken to a storage unit and I turned in my lease because I felt completely disqualified for being a man of God because I stood face to face with a demon and felt powerless. You know why? Because uh, God's people uh, perish due to a lack of vision and a lack of knowledge. And so I could see the devil, but I was hard pressed to do anything about it when he was staring me right in the face. So I closed my church down after making the last load. I was covered in filth and I sat down in Weatherford, Texas in a, in a parking lot and I prayed. And I was praying still when I drove away headed towards home when God pointed out to me a little storefront church in the old J.C. Penney's. And he said, there are people in there that can train you to fight devils. I didn't know that church from Adam. I walked in there, met a lady behind the desk who was pretty quick in informing me that that was a deliverance church specializing in freeing people from demonic possession. And I got, began my exorcism training that day. And I had been fighting devils for 20 for 20 years this year. 20 years this year, I've been an exorcist for 20 years. And it's because of that moment when I realized that these preachers that sit in these pulpits don't know the first thing about devil fighting. They don't know the first thing about spiritual authority. They don't know first the first thing about how to, to put a demon in chains, bind it, and then cast it out of somebody. They know all about praise and worship. They know all about tithing. They know all about Bible verses, uh, the ones that, that go with all that other stuff. They know all about sin, what you shouldn't do. But they really don't know the first thing about fighting devils. Brothers and sisters, we're entering into an unprecedented time of spiritual warfare. The devil is rampaging like never before since the days of the Roman Empire. Our American government and American empire is about to fall to demonic control. They've got at least half of it already under their control, maybe more. And the only man who's even talking about God in the government and a high-ranking leader in our government is Donald Trump. Donald Trump said God preserved him and his life for a purpose when that bullet grazed his ear. I told you that the Holy Spirit has spoken to me personally, telling me that Donald Trump is under God's protection because of the prayers of the saints and our need for someone to stand up to these devils in the real world. Because Lord knows our pastors won't do it. They might lose their 501c3 exemption. Why does that not bother me? Because I, I never asked for a 501c3 exemption, and there's nothing for them to take away from me, so I can freak, speak freely about this topic and others. And now I'm going to do something unusual. And I may do an individual video of just this statement. But I want to make a statement to Donald Trump himself. 
Donald Trump, you find yourself to this, this day at the heart of a supernatural war. A war for the hearts and minds of the American people, for the very soul of our country. You found yourself there and you are greatly under-equipped to deal with the demonic backlash that has been coming your way, is coming your way, and will continue to come your way as long as you stand up against the swamp, which is nothing more than a bunch of demon-possessed people on a mission for the devil. That's what the swamp is. They're devils. And if you don't surround yourself with at least one advisor who understands spiritual warfare, not, so, not some feel-good preacher who just pats people on the back and makes them feel good, not some guy who's obsessed with sin and holiness, but a man that fully understands the brutal reality of a life-and-death spiritual struggle against the demonic, a man that understands that you have to put on the salvation, the helmet of salvation so you can't be thumped in the head and taken out with a single blow, that you need to be sure of your salvation in Christ and stand behind that so you can't be killed. You need to have the, the, the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. You need to prepare yourself for the battle that comes ahead. You need to be shod with the shoes and the boots of the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need to know what you're doing and you need to surround yourself with people who understand this. You need to surround yourself with people who not just know the Bible but understand it and know how to utilize its lessons in regular daily life. So I'm offering you my services. As outlandish and out there as it seems, I'm telling you, Donald John Trump, you need a devil fighter on your shoulder. You need a devil fighter who's got your back. You need somebody who understands the demonic plot, who understands and has discernment about who's on what side. You need somebody that can look a demon-possessed person in the eye and tell them, I take authority over you in Jesus' name. This person needs to be discreet. They need to be highly trained. And they need to be a devil fighter and an exorcist with blood on their blade, blood on their sword of the spirit. They need to have demon blood all over them from killing these devils and they need to have a track record of it in the spirit realm. You need a trained exorcist and devil fighter at your disposal 24-7. He needs to have a small team. He needs to have a second who is an intercessor, an intercessory prayer expert who has the gift of intercessory prayer and discernment. And then that person also needs a third person and an antenna. Someone who, is, who can see through the veil in the spirit realm and see demons manifested in reality. They can see a demon all over a person. And I have used this three-person team to just kick the devil in the teeth over and over and over again. I have lost count of the number of people I have pulled from the jaws of Satan and delivered them through because of divine ordination and God's calling on my life. God has used me to deliver them from evil. And if Donald Trump, Donald Trump, if you don't see the spiritual war you're in, the devil's going to get around your physical defenses and get you. He's going to get you. He's going to take you out, take you down, and destroy you. And the only reason he hasn't is because God has divinely protected you. But you better get serious about it. You better stop being an armchair Christian. Donald Trump, you need to fall on your face before God. You need to repent of every one of your sins, and then you need to put somebody in your direct vicinity who's an expert at fighting devils. They need to be intelligent and discreet. And don't you dare pick them because they look good in a suit or a dress. Don't you pick them for how they look. They're probably going to look like me, some scruffy old curmudgeon. Somebody that looks like Russell Crowe from the, the Pope's Exorcist, right? He, he and I look <laughs> crazily similar, I've been told. He probably ain't going to be pretty because devil fighters aren't in the business of being pretty. 
Devil, devil fighters are in the business of the bloody, real act of spiritual warfare against the demonic. And it's men like me and other men like me who understand this war are the only thing keeping all of you out of the fiery furnace of the devil and the beast system. Apathetic Christians end up being cannon fodder in a spiritual war. You can't be apathetic. You can't phone it in. You have to embrace the war. You have to embrace the spiritual battle. You have to embrace your role and your, and your position in this world and the authority that God has given us as believers to trample on the devil and put him under our feet. And anything less is a recipe for disaster. Anything less is a fool's folly. And one thing I know about you, Donald Trump, I wouldn't mistake you for a fool. So you better get your spiritual ducks in order or the devil's going to swallow you whole and your whole family and your corporation and everybody that voted for you too. I won't argue whether God put Donald Trump in this position or not. But he's there now. And he's, the, he's in the prime and perfect position to instigate a spiritual war against the swamp and finally get these devil-worshipping pagans out of the White House, out of the State House, out of the, of the Senate and the House, out of the judges' positions, out of our police force, out of our military, and replace them with people who look to God for answers. People who are called by God to lead us. You can argue whether Donald Trump was called a long time ago or just now. But he's in the prime position. The only open position right now available. I hate these flies. They never come out until I start preaching. And they seem to just come out of nowhere. Listen, I need y'all to pray for me. And uh, I meant to tell this story earlier in this message. But the devil tries to kill these babies that, I've, that I'm taking care of on a regular basis. And I, cha uh, I saved one of them from choking. You can see that story. I think I saved a baby's life tonight is one of my videos from a few months back. And I did it again tonight with the older kid. He was two years, he's a two year old little man. You've heard me talk about him. He appeared on the channel once when he was younger. And he almost choked to death on a chunk, chunk of chicken right in front of me. And God used me once again to dislodge this from this baby's throat. The devil's targeted these kids because he can't get to me. So he's trying to find loopholes and, and, and holes in my defenses. And I need you guys to plug those holes with prayer. Pray for little man and jazzy. Pray for these babies that God's put in my, in my home and in my family. For this adopted family. I need your prayers. Not just for me, but for them. But if Donald Trump does not get serious about this fight against evil that he's found himself embroiled in, next time he won't be so lucky. Next time he won't dodge a uh, impeachment. Next time he won't dodge a conviction. Next time he won't dodge a bullet or a poison or a blade. Because the devil don't fight fair. Yeah, we know that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of wickedness in high places. But the devil's main tool is flesh and blood. Donald Trump, you can be the greatest president this country has ever known. You can transform our country into a spirit-led nation who is in line with God and who puts an end to these endless wars, who puts an end to poverty, who puts an end to crime. You can be that guy, but not without God in your corner. God has put Donald Trump on my heart the last couple of weeks since well, since the assassination attempt that's when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and went see I'm protecting him look at his life and then I looked back at the last nine years and I saw how much God has been protecting him all along the way and it's for a purpose and I'm challenging you Donald Trump to walk past the earthly power that you know that you possess walk past the earthly strength that you know that you possess and embrace a new day where you're being spirit led every day. Put in your, in your sphere, make an advisor out of, of a trained exorcist. 
You yourself, Donald Trump, need to submit to one of these men and let them do a spirit cleansing on you because I think there are still demons hiding on you and around you. That you are going through the act of deliverance, but it's taking many months, many years. And you need that process sped up because we need you fighting for our country right now. So you need to submit to deliverance. There might be a demon of pride that needs to be exercised. I'm not acting in that role right now. I'm just telling you, you need to submit to that process. And then you, do, you need to keep somebody like that with you who can whisper in your ear and go, yeah, that person seems like they're on your team, but I sense evil in them. My antenna associate here agrees with me. And my intercessory prayer expert is praying against it right now. But you need to be aware that there is a demonic element in this individual or that individual or that leader. You need that spiritual insight. And you need that divine protection. You need to ramp up your defenses, Donald Trump. Saying a little prayer here and there is uh, not going to cut it anymore. And to who much is given, much is expected. So I volunteer for the gig. I promise you I will be the, the most underpaid um, advisor to the president who ever held the job. That if you pay me more than $30,000 a year, I'll give it all away to the homeless and the needy and the hungry and the, and the heartbroken, the addicted. I, I will, I'll put it towards addiction treatment and, and feeding the homeless. And So if you give me a big salary like the rest of them fat cats, I'll give it all away because I don't care about money. If you don't pick me, Donald, pick somebody with my level of faith spiritual understanding of, of uh, the powers of darkness and how they operate because you need a spiritual advisor with you at all times and not some milk toast TV preacher that just says things that make you feel good. You need someone capable of speaking that powerful prayer. The one I'll speak over you right now. Lord, surround Donald Trump in your ring of fire and hedge of thorns of protection. Send mighty angels of sufficient rank, authority, and number to drive the enemy from his midst, O Lord. Lord, surround your people in your ring of fire and your hedge of thorns of protection. Send mighty angels of sufficient rank, authority, and number to drive the enemy from our midst, Lord, and cover us in your peace. And guide us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time on the sheep pen.